Kylie Jenner is super rich and her business is wildly successful, but for years she has lied and exaggerated just how successful she really is. The numbers just don't add up. Kylie Jenner's camp led us to believe that the business had done 360 million in revenue in 2018. In reality, that number was only 125 million. We estimated that Kylie brought home something like $166.5 million in 2018 and $170 million in earnings in 2019. In actuality, it was only around 50 million each year. My jewelry has always been fake. <laughs> Rolexes, diamonds, everything is cubic zirconia because it all shines the same when the light hits it. If you already have money, there's no reason to buy anything real. Other people have an image to live up to. They're trying to impress, they're trying to compete. I've never been one of those. You're never gonna get rich spending your money to look rich. Never. Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude, where we talk about everything and I'm Karina Lude. If you're not yet part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to like, subscribe, and join the Friendship Circle. If you're already part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to turn on notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. I just want to say there's a lot of people that you know, I see on social media that really want to validate themselves and this is in no way to judge even if you've done it before it's nothing like that but I want to look at it on a more how you are perceived by people who are actually where you're pretending to be if that makes sense we all pretended to be rich at some point okay I faked it till I made it <laughs> okay okay so when we moved to America, we weren't in the life of luxury that we were used to in Haiti. And many of you guys might think Haiti does not have luxury. That is a lie. But when I lived there, we were in the lap of luxury. Okay. It's not all poverty and what you see on the news at all. But when we moved to America, essentially most immigrants have to start over, especially if colleges in Haiti are not accredited here in America and it's different. You go see your parents at like high paying jobs to like dishwashing, you know? But nonetheless, they climbed up. And I remember at that time, we couldn't afford the new, me and my sister used to wear Fila's from Payless. <laughs> okay, now I see Fila's is like popular. I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right. Fila, yeah. I had two pairs of Fila's uh, for school, and then I had one shirt shoes, which was just black. You could not get any other color because your shoe had to go with everything. You'd go buy like five pairs of clothes for the school year. You make sure you have one good pair of jeans in there, four shirts so you can mix and match, and then you'll buy like a jacket for winter type of thing. Like we were that poor, okay? And we'd have like three, four church dresses. And then, you know, as a child, you're growing every year. So it's not like you can recycle clothes. And I couldn't recycle clothes with my sister. She was much taller than me, um, was a little heavier than me and everything. So we, we couldn't, there was no hand-me-downs. It was like, ugh, it sucked. But I faked it till I made it. I learned how to put clothes together, make it look different, style my hair differently, accessories. And I wanted to like, you know, hustle and get there. And I used to hate going to school because I went to an all black elementary. Most of the kids were going through what I was going through was not an issue. But when I went to middle school, my black friends who stayed in the suburbs in that area that I'm like, cause I was biased. Um, because that's all I saw when I first came from Haiti. I thought all black people live in poverty and America and white America is just pushing them down. Like I don't know no rich black person <laughs> in Miami unless they're a celebrity, but I'm like, I wanna know a real life rich black person. So in middle school, I started being exposed to that a little bit more and I wanted to fit in. You know, I wanted to fit in with those friends and I didn't want them to ever come to my house, see how I was living, how we were living. You know what I mean? That's when I was pushing to find how can I hustle? I was selling airheads. They're like candy. It was a hustle you did in middle school. All kids, most kids did it, even the white kids for extra cents. Some would sell lemonades. My neighborhood was not a lemonade stand type of neighborhood. <laughs> Let's just say that. So we couldn't sell lemonade, if you know what I mean. Cause the boys already had the block hot. <laughs> they were already selling other things and lemonade, if you catch my drift. So I was like, I have to find something else. So I started buying, like I asked my dad for money and I would buy the stacks of airheads and I would sell them like 25 cents a piece or whatever. And back then 25 cents was a lot. And I would take the money and I would go and purchase one, like ex to me what I thought was expensive, you know, for kids, like, 
I'd buy those little glitter purses that was like fifteen twenty dollars because all the other girls would have them and I'd have you know my Hello Kitty shoes like you know that was considered you know at that time you're a kid so I started telling myself that I want to look the part you start to fake it you start to literally pretend like I'd play scenarios in my head where I'm dining at this nice restaurant and I'm flying on my private jet and I'm having like grapes being fed to me. I started really coming into that character from middle school and I realized that a lot of my friends' parents that were rich looked less rich than the friends that I had whose parents were poor. Let me try to break that down. Basically, my friends in the hood, their parents would be Gucci down, Dior down, Chanel bag down. Um, they'd have luxury car in their garage, although the house is like, you know, or apartment. Um, they'd have the latest phone every time it comes out and all of those things versus when I'd go hang out with my rich friends on the other side of town. Their parents look basic. They'll have a regular Walmart shoe on, okay? <laughs> I was like, ooh, they don't look rich, but the house is huge. They do invest in their cars, but they don't drive it like that. Like, I remember when I was playing soccer, one of my friend's mom used to like carpool all of us, like pick us up, and she'd always been this regular minivan, but they had like a Range Rover in the car, in their garage too. Like they had like three cars, I think. She never drove it. And I didn't understand until I purchased my first little car. And yeah, to fix those cars cost a lot of money. And even if you have it, like it's ridiculous to spend that much money to fix a car so you don't want to just put miles on it and drive it unnecessarily you will always need like a regular car that's easy to fix if whatever happens you can get to point a to point b you don't need to go to walmart in a Rolls royce can you imagine someone pulling up to a mcdonald's in a Rolls royce you don't need to bring attention to your wealth and be flashy all the time but as a child i didn't understand that because where i was coming from and my dad and uncles used to explain that to me but you know you young you don't understand i'm like i don't know nothing y'all old haitians i don't know nothing and they used to tell me that you're never going to get rich spending your money to look rich never okay the only way you're going to get rich is by saving your money to invest and do all of those things and if you're spending all your money every time you get it to get the 24 26 36 inches <laughs> you know the next chanel bag a birkin or this or that or whatever you're never gonna get it you know what i mean and a lot of people especially on social media um don't have it like that they really don't and you'll be like but kareen how come they don't have it like that but they're charging like 100K per promotional post or they're getting money, large revenues from YouTube and this and that. Yeah, because once they get that 100K, like I did a breakdown in a previous video where I broke down Beyonce's annual income, like according to, you know, articles and stuff like that, compared to how much she spends to maintain. And you all were in the comments, like comment below if you remember that video. And I was telling you guys, these celebrities could be making one to two million like a month, let's say for being dramatic, but their expenses <laughs> are like 1.8 million. So what they have left is like, you know, a lot of them want to flex. They'll have three, four homes. Mortgages aren't cheap on multi-million dollar homes. They'll have different luxury cars. They didn't just buy cash all the time. They have to pay that. Have you ever tried to pay an electricity bill and like the bigger or bigger your homes come, you'll get like, I know one of my friends who lives in this huge house and we were all like, you know, him and his wife are always talking about when I'm complaining about my bills in the past, like, oh my God, look, she's complaining about her $120 electricity bill. And they're always like laughing at me. And I'm like, how much is your electricity bill? Because <laughs> that's my apartment electricity bill and I'm complaining about it. And theirs is like in the thousands. And then you pay property tax. It's ghetto. It's really ghetto. And now I see why rich people, well, let's say smart, not nouveau rich, you know, the new rich people, 
are not always so quick to purchase a home. You know what I mean? And a lot of them stay in like condos or they'll stay in like these luxurious apartment buildings, kind of like what Wendy Williams is always talking about with a doorman. And even in Florida, they have them. I never knew they existed because I wasn't into that life or whatever. But for the longest, I thought it was a New York thing, but they have these luxurious apartments now. You, you'll find a lot of millionaires in your building. Like my last two apartments that I stayed at, there were always some big people in my building. And I used to just be like, why not just buy a house? Why spend this da 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 da? And it's like a house, even though people are like, but you'll end up owning the home. So it's not like you're losing it when you're paying your mortgage and things like that. Well, um, tune in next week so I can break down to you why all of this is a lie and why in America you never really truly own anything. More expenses come with more bigger space, more cars. That's why I say more money, more problem. Managing your assets, paying your accountants, having money. A lot of people lose a lot of money you know, from their accountants and financial advisors stealing from them simply because they just trust people with their money and not overlooking anything. I, I wanna oversee everything. I wanna calculate my assets and whoever my financial advisors are and my accountant now knows I overlook everything. I wanna know why this, why that, and it has to make sense and I triple check. I read the fine point, uh, fine print and everything. If it doesn't make sense, I stick to my guns, okay? And that sense, a lot of, to go back on topic, a lot of celebrities and rich people, like it, net worth means nothing. Net worth does not mean what you have in your actual account, but that's basic finance 101. Everybody knows that, right? When I was in working before YouTube and I was working for a financial company, I always rep, go to 3D Financial. They are very accredited, okay, with five-star rating. <laughs> I worked with them for a long time and no, this is not sponsored or promoted. They did not ask for this, okay? But I worked for them, so, you know, yeah. But um, they did everything, bookkeeping, accounting, they do taxes for people, they also do credit repair. When I was there, I did credit repair as well, as be the office manager and help several people get their homes, their dream homes, and do financial planning with people. So a lot of times when I worked there, there's a, when I first started working there, there's a lot I didn't know. And when I started doing credit repair and those things, it forced me and encouraged me to understand the system a little bit more, you know? And of course, I got a lot of firsthand knowledge because the people that were working there were doing pretty well. And I was able to see how they move and things like that, you know? So one thing I learned is that just because someone is bringing in, like the company itself is a multi-million dollar company. It has that much uh, movement within the finances in that company that the office would see that kind of money. But it didn't mean that's how much <laughs> the owners, the two, the COO and the CEO was walking away with. <laughs> you know what I mean? There were expenses. When you're starting a business, it's, it's not just look at how much I will make from this business or what's the potential of what I can make. It's about what will the expenses look like and liability and is this risky in terms of am I responsible for people's lives? What's the suing rate? <laughs> Because, you know, a lot of businesses get sued so much because of the level of risk and what insurance companies will want to even work. There's so many questions, right? And so I learned that a lot of people will make, just like the business, multi-millions a year, but their accounts do not see it. So their net worth can be high if you're counting those assets, you know what I mean? Of course, minus liabilities, but your assets for those who are still, um, I know I have a lot of high schoolers in my in, that follow me, and I know in high school I didn't learn this stuff, so I know they're not teaching it to you guys. America, do better. School in general. But that what's counted in your asset is like my cars, okay? My cars, once I own them, or my assets, your home, etc., like stuff that's already purchased. Like you can put a Gucci bag, all your bags, Chanel bags, and count it towards your assets when you sit down with a financial advisor. If you want your net worth to go up because you want to get a loan or whatever the case may be, but it does not mean that's how much you have in your bank account. And a lot of people look up 
people's net worths, these celebrities are, oh, he got two million, three, he's worth three million, okay, and then get with him, and when he can't even buy you a cheeseburger, you're like, he's broke, girl, he's fraud. No, sis, he acquired a lot of material things to look rich when he could have been rich if he just knew how to save his money and stop flexing. <laughs> It's that simple, okay? A lot of these celebrities go broke so quick. That's why we saw during the pandemic, a lot of them were going to alternative ways to make money. People that would say they would never do a bear scene in a movie, now you see them on only, on fans only, right? It's because they weren't managing their money right. And they're not paying into account, especially in America. I don't know what taxing is like all over the world, um, but I know everyone pays taxes. In America, the IRS are goons. They're thugs, <laughs> okay? They will come for you. They don't care if you're Martha Stewart. They do not care who you are. They will come for you because they, their main business is to collect and to collect every penny. And you have to be really like, know the law to make sure you're not doing anything illegal, but know how to file your taxes to keep most of your money in your pocket legally, like write off these expenses, what you spend money on. But at the same time, a lot of these people don't have financial literacy to understand these things and they don't know how to file their taxes to keep most of their money. They don't know how to make their money, make more money. Instead, they're just taking their money out. Anything, like Robert Kiyosaki said, anything that is taking money from your account is a liability and anything that is putting money into your account is an asset, okay? For celebrities, if they do decide to go, like a lot of rappers when they first get in the game, they wanna sell an image, right? Because we're gullible enough to buy into that image. So they'll buy the chains, they'll spend 100 grand on a chain, a bracelet, a McLaren, <laughs> a house, and this and that. And once that image is put out there, that they're big balling, oh my, they must be getting money, they're popular, people are listening to them, it attracts more fans and sometimes they can get their money back, but a lot of times they're gonna keep that cycle of elevating even more and more until, you know, it falls flat. So, it can work that way because I know someone will comment that below like, hey, sometimes flexing is not, you know, always losing money. But let me tell you how you are perceived when you're flex, leaving all of that little financial stuff out. When you flex to people who have money, who actually have business is and are not in debt and don't feel no need to flex, they're confident in where they're at. Like me, I am confident in where I am financially, okay? I don't need to flex what I have. That's called confidence where you are and understanding that you worked hard for your money. How are you just gonna throw it away like that? Do you wanna continue working this hard? But when you have someone who's well-to-do, but when I was on there, we had a couple women who were billionaires or married to billionaires that would talk to us. That was in our Discord. And I, I saw that a lot of them found it very, they look at celebrities like, ugh, like they're classless. And we did the Jean Tierney video. She came from a very well-to-do, filthy, rich, filthy, disgustingly rich family who did not want her to go into acting because they thought it was a low budget. They didn't like the women. They thought they had no class. And you know, this was the 50s, glamour. Well, we thought the women were the classiest, you know? But I notice when I get into circles with the real shot callers that pay these celebrities, the ones that own the production companies, they are disgusted by those who always brag about how much money they have, always want to show IRS and everybody else how much money they make. There's the trend of showing receipts. When you at a restaurant, you ate, you want to show receipts. Like these are women that never had nothing growing up and they needed to validate that. These are young men that are doing the same. Why are we showing receipts? okay, you paid for something, way to be an adult. They'll go shopping and show people, yeah, 56,000 was spent on this. And it's like, 
the people following you don't have it you're creating an envy to where there will be a strong dislike it will be the economy is going down allegedly if you know anything about money inflation and stuff you know it's only a matter of time and it will be eat the rich it will be eat the rich all of those celebrities that kept flexing their money bragging about it wait on it there will be the tide will turn against the wealthy it will it will and the tide turns against the wealthy who's obscenely trying to show their wealth that's who they, the tides turn against when the people are starving that has happened throughout history in the middle ages and in the bible times when the people are starving they turn against the wealthy they turn against the church you know the catholic church was the richest entity in the world at that time and the people started turning against them because it's like we're starving why are you flexing why are you in the most expensive jewels and this and that and we're supporting you like what, what's going on you know and i hear how these wealthy people talk where they're like yeah, people just be on their stories. They want to show you how many like different cars. They'll go in their garage and show you the lineup. You're bragging. Or they'll go do, I don't know. It, it could be anything. You just bought a new piece of jewelry. Unless you're like, I'll say this. There's close friends like me. I have my close friends. If I buy something that's obscene and I'm just excited about it. You show those people you know that genuinely in the same place where you're at and that's not gonna, you know, like there's friends I have that aren't celebrities, they aren't influencers, but they live a luxurious life and I live to look at their stories. They give me life. One of my favorites, I don't know, she has her Instagram private, so I'm not even gonna name her name, okay? But um, I love looking at her stories, love it. She lives her best luxurious life, but only her private circle of friends uh, or family that she allows them to her page are seeing that not the world and a lot of rappers football players or whatever because they're 10 unfortunately i hate to say it, they're the ones doing it the most and nouveau rich influencers once they start showing off like that who's getting robbed now at high alarms getting their chains snatched their homes ransacked is it worth it I had to ask myself that. I was like, sometimes you want to flex. It's okay. Sometimes I want to flex. I want to tell you that ri real rich people are not impressed. They know who's faking it and who's not. Someone who's faking it will always be too decked out, doing too much. Okay? People who really got it are so scared of people knowing they really got it. And it's not just because of being robbed and stuff, because they know when... Too many people know you really got it they try to take it from you and when i say people i mean irs but we here in america have to play it more safe there's consequences to flexing crime rates are extremely high and taxes are just rising by the minute so there's consequences and i think it's just in terms of you know without judgment at all because well, when i used to be young i did it i'm telling you guys my story i used to waste money on stuff and i had to learn as an adult like yo you know but now when i look at it i have more compassion like i understand this person doesn't get it yet but they will but now as an adult when i see richer people just doing that it's kind of like ugh, it's i'm not impressed and that is the first way i know you broke or you, you, you a couple, you, you, you real close to being broke. You one cancellation away from being broke. You probably barely have a savings. That's how I look at it. Cause you like to show people and people that like to show people like to spend money and people that like to spend money to show people always end up broke. That's just a fact. That's the reality. Always end up broke. Cause you constantly on this cycle of showing people like as women we love to invite people to our home to see and a lot of people may be shocked when they see a rich woman well to do in a simple home like why not get something that's super it's like yeah that's great and all but remember our last financial video i said if you can't buy something three times don't buy it so if i can't 
purchased my dream home three times. Like some people, their net worths are like four million and they'll go buy a $40 million home. You cannot buy that four times. Why? You know, if I can't afford to purchase this car three times without, you know, no kind of, oh my goodness, I'm gonna pay my mortgage and stuff like that, why will I buy the car? How are you gonna get rich if you're always spending and showing your money? And you're inviting leeches into your life. The more you flex, just like when you have a man or you get a hot girl and you keep flexing too much, there's people that's gonna go follow your man just cause they like, this is happy. I like, they start to fall in love with your man right before your eyes cause you keep flexing him just like for women. Trust me, I've had men I was talking to and that was flexing being with me cause it's a flex, honey. <laughs> But I'm joking, I'm joking. But they were like, oh yeah, Kareem, da, 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 always showing me and their friends would come and try to talk to me. I'm talking about like, that's my best friend of 10, 12 years. And I'm like, okay, but then they low key try to slip their way in. And I'm like, but the whole time you talking about your girl so much, people like, they start to be like, dang, that's what I want. And even though they know you off limits, they're gonna reach. It's the same with money. You flexing, oh, I just bought this new home. I'm like, damn, I wish I could have bought my home this year. I've been saving for two years. And you invite that hate, that envy. Or sometimes when you see people getting what you are working towards, even though you tell yourself, hold on, it's not your time yet, it's coming, you're gonna feel away a little bit. And you check yourself, right? I'm always talking about that on the channel. Check yourself. And it's like, my time is coming. It's all good. It's all good. You know what I mean? But I'm like, not everybody will think like this. Some people will genuinely send the evil eye your way and even wish death, poverty, and all that on you because you're doing too much. And it's a sign of humility, you know, like, how come these people never flex that they're feeding the homeless? They never flex that they're helping somebody else out. And, I, and the ones that I hate the most are the ones that think they're better than because they have what they have. The ones that like to call everyone else broke because they forgot. They might be one accident away or one bad economy drop away from being at the bottom. I hate those types. Like you have it, it's not to flex on people like, it's what have you, can you brag about helping out any organizations or charities? No, then why are you bragging about how much money you got? I, I don't like those kind of low vibrational stuff anyways, you know, but it's, it's, I know several people that really use their wealth to really like ish on people and just be like, you're broke, you can't sit with me, like, they'll even laugh about someone getting a cheaper version of something they got and i'm like sis this person can surpass you next week or next month you don't know it, things can happen for people overnight okay and you could lose it all be humble be humble okay and i really want you guys to not follow these trends putting money on your ears you know showing your receipts showing your myriad of bags if you're not a fashion blogger or whatever, or you're not trying to make your Instagram aesthetically pleasing with fashion, that's one thing. Um, girl, go ahead, show me. I wanna see the bag and the shoes too, yes. But if it's just in a means, like when the Birkin era happened where the girls would just, it was like a, who got more money because of more Birkins. It wasn't even about fashion and what outfit you're wearing. It was just, you got Birkins and it was like, okay <laughs> and you'd be surprised how many regular people i know who actually got more in the bank than these people it's sad and you see i just i just i'm gonna wrap it up here because i don't want it to be too long i know i ranted and i went off topic into finances but this was on my mind but i want you guys to comment below be honest with yourself i had to train myself 
to not try to always look rich, you know? And I'm glad that I'm Seven Day Adventist, um, where we don't really, we don't wear jewelry. Well, at least I don't wear jewelry like that too, because I'm like, if I did, bling, 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 and I'd want the real thing all the time. So it makes it a lot easier. And, you know, for the most part, they tend to be less materialistic and more into, like, I would want to drop a band, like money on my house where I'm going to live, because that's my sanctuary. That's my peace. So that's what I would want to save for to get, like, if I'm going to buy a home, honey, you know, it's going to be a home, okay? That's my sanctuary versus a Birkin bag or this and that or whatever. And then whatever money you're spending on your Birkins, leave that for security to guard your palace. <laughs> yeah, spend it on security. You know, a lot of people, rappers are getting robbed because they don't want to pay for security. <laughs> they want to hire their homeboys <laughs> who's setting them up. And it's like... How are you gonna acquire all these assets with no security? Like, even if you're not a big name, there's people that are not big names that are just, when I say big names, like they're not celebrities, but they're lawyers. In Florida, think of the most popular lawyers you know, okay? One of them live in Longwood, and I used to live nearby and heavily guarded. And they're not celebrities, they're just very wealthy people but you have all these assets people know protect your assets you know what i mean so yeah comment below a time where you know you wanted to look rich what's the funniest story you had of i'll tell you my funniest story i'll end it with this and you guys tell your funniest story so we used to buy imitation bags <laughs> and the hood i had a plug they'll get a bag that looks real and i would get the little michael course mikhail course if you're haitian and i would get my dior bags and stuff in there they wouldn't be real right and so <laughs> Here I am always dressing down and some people would fall for it like, oh, cause you know, when you look good, your hair's done, makeup's nice and your outfit is nice. People would believe that these things are expensive, but they're not. And so I was out, I was out. And this guy, you know, he was a gay guy. They're always putting us out. <laughs> We're now friends, you know what I mean? But he walked up to me like, oh my God, I love your bag. Oh my, oh. This is not real. <laughs> uh, cries in, in pain. I cry in pain. Um, yeah, I was embarrassed, but it was just me. It was not like those people around me. I was like, oh yeah. He was like, oh, I'm sorry, honey. I spoke so fast on it. I was like, it's cool. It's cool. You're all this and that. And of course he went on to make jokes, blah, 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 blah. We talked, find each other on Instagram. But <sighs> that moment stayed with me. I'm not going to lie. And I was like, you know what? I'm buying these things to flex on people for real. Because like, why did I need to go buy a fake bag? Like, who did I need to feel validated? I felt somewhat validated when people thought it was real. When people think you rich. So I, you know, was like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this fake bag era. And I told myself, if you're ever gonna buy a bag, cause bags can be investments, you know, over time, like a good vintage. I, I'm not gonna say this story, but there's a good vintage Chanel bag that cost like some good money where when it was originally being sold, I think it was gonna be sold for like $800 originally when it was first made. And over the years it went up and um, it, the final price when it was being resold was like 3500 and people are like damn that's a lot yeah for it was a tiny little vintage bag that was originally supposed to be sold for for 800 but over time it's like oh vent it, you know people want that so it start and i'm like if you keep it a couple more years it'll be worth a lot more just like some cars some convertibles you know they're just keep climbing up up, up more because they're a vintage they're a classic it's like i'm like if i'm gonna do that let me actually get it and when i get it when you work so hard to actually get the authentic bag and it's not like a guy doing it for you or whatever you find that when i first got my first chanel bag i did not want to flex it because i'm just like like when you first get the first Lux Chanel bag, you almost don't want to flex it. Is you work hard to get, when you work hard to get, I can always tell the people that don't work hard that just got luck or something, you just want to protect it. 
I don't know how to explain it. Like you want to protect it, but that's when it comes with wisdom. You know, you want to protect your home when you work so hard to get it. So you put alarm systems, you get a guard dog, you, you know, whatever, get a gun and, um, your car, you get insurance, you get this, that your health. If you love yourself, you get health insurance. If you can't afford it, you eat different. You try to get sleep. Like you can always tell who doesn't really love themselves by hygiene, etc. this and that. And who didn't really work hard for what they have because you'll go in someone's car and it's so dirty all the time. Most likely, because when you first buy your first luxury car, honey, I was washing my car every other day. You don't want to dirty it. You don't want to mess it up. You're sensitive about people scratching it. And it's not about, oh, you're so cheap or you're so whatever. It's, yo, I worked hard for this. Blood, sweat, and tears for this. I want to protect it. You know what I mean? And a lot of people that don't have to, especially filthy, wealthy people, like you have celebrities showing they don't wear the same boxers twice. They won't wear the same shoes more than once or twice. And you'll have even leaders of, of worlds that will just spend money frivolously on, on different things, probably looking for happiness or whatever, because they didn't have to work hard for it anymore. They've already arrived. And yes, maybe when you're like a multi-billionaire and you're like, yo, I've uh, reached the highest levels of wealth that I could have reached, then you can get to a point where it doesn't matter what you buy. Buy a planet, <laughs> you know what I mean? But until you're there, like protect what you work for. Why show your money on the gram just so IRS can come and tax you. You're not protecting your assets. So that was my funny story. Comment below your story and how you overcome. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure to share this video with a friend. Make sure you thumbs up and interact with the video. It always helps my channel out. So leave a comment. I love you until next time. Mwah.